echo valley. The echo valley is a simple function that echoes back whatever you say, but how do you make it respond to something more interesting like a flag? We get the source and the binary. Have you ever heard of a format string attack? So the first thing we'll do is we'll look at valley.c. So we have this echo valley function. It loops forever, I guess, until you type exit. And then whatever you input up to 100 characters gets printed out without a format string. So there's the format string vulnerability. Um, so what we can do with that is walk up the stack. First, we're going to find where we are on the stack. So we can see with those 41s that we control, the first thing we type in is going to be six spots up the stack. All right, so that's good. Now let's look here at um, Valley. So we look at Valley. There's a print flag method, which is what we want to call. And here in main, the call to echo valley is going to have a return address that ends in 413. So that's going to be important to find where that return address is on the stack. And we're going to want to change that 413, I guess 1413, to be basically 1269. All right, so if we call it again, we can simply keep walking up the stack. Um, I'm going to skip a little bit because I've actually done this before. And we'll see there at spot 21 is the return address. We can recognize that because it ends with the 413 that we saw in Ghidra when we uh, decompiled this thing. All right, so what I've done now is I've created a small little program. It's going to connect to it. We're going to send 20, so just below the return address, is going to be the frame pointer. So if we look at Echo Valley, you'll see that just below the uh, return address, it's pushed the frame pointer. And that frame pointer, if you look back at main, uh, there's basically just a tiny frame here that has the frame pointer from, from main. So it will be a pointer, which is just eight bytes away from the return address. That's important because in a printf vulnerability, in order to write to memory, we have to have the address. We have to know the address that we want to write to. That's randomized. The code is at a random address. We're going to leak a stack address and leak um, the return address and then use that. Okay, so here we're leaking the stack address, and I'm going to subtract 8 to get to the, where the location of the return address. I'm going to push a bunch of A's. That's going to push this um, out to the 8th and 9th position on the stack, and I'm just going to go ahead and interact with it. So we uh, now see at the eighth position on the stack, we have um, our A's. There we have at the ninth position, we have the first lowest order byte of the return address. At the tenth position, we have just one more than that. So we're going to write one byte at a time. So we know that that 413, so that's in the 21st spot, is where the return address is. So we want to change that. Okay, so that ninth parameter and that 10th parameter are pointers. 
uh, into the this byte, uh, the 13, and then the 94. So we're first going to try to modify this byte. So this 13, that was the return address. We want to change that to be the address of print flag, which is 69. So 69 hex is, uh, what is that? 696 plus 9 is like 105. So we want to change that byte to be 105. So we could say like percent 5c. And we'll say percent $9 HHN. So what it's going to do is it's going to write 105 characters. Then it's going to write using this pointer how many characters have been written so far, which will be 105. So that should change the last byte of the return address. So we've managed to make that a 69. So now the byte before it, we'll use this 10th uh, parameter. It was 94. We want to change it to be too smaller because print flag had the 12 versus the 14. So 94 in hex is what, 9 times 16, 90, 144, 148. So we want 146. So that should have changed the return address to be exactly what we want. And if we exit, hopefully that will return to print flag. And there we go. Pico CTF, um, something format flask.